So are you ready to die for the sake of the gospel? We're going to talk about that today. We're going to first start in John chapter 12. John chapter 12 says this. John 12 and 24 says this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth, verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, unto life eternal. And the Lord was reminding me that sometimes we may forget why we're really here. Sometimes we may forget that being a follower of Christ also means that not only will we, will we take part in his victories, but also in his suffering. Um, I think Philippians chapter four talks about that. Let's go there really quick before we get into the meat of this discussion. Philippians chapter four, or is it chapter three? We're going to see in a second. Okay, Philippians four, actually, I think it's three. Okay, here it is. Philippians three and 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. And this is an important realization for us to understand as believers, because sometimes it can be easy to forget that. So even when Jesus came, he knew that even before he came into this world, because the Bible says in John, John one, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so the eternal spirit that was inside of Jesus always was. He was born in the flesh. That flesh came to be through Mary, but he always was. Um, and then if you look at Colossians, it talks about how he was the image of the invisible God. And so when we look at Philippians 3 and 10, when we look at John 12, 24 through 25, we see that it's important for us to remember as believers that we're not just here to only enjoy this life. I believe that God desires for us to have pleasure, that he, he allows us to experience things in this life that are pleasurable. But the Bible reminds us that we can't, that we have to be, we can't be conformed to this world because the world, you know, you see that the world has this mindset of trying to live forever. And it really focuses on enjoying this life. But we understand that, yes, I believe that God wants to wants us to experience great things in this life. But he also wants us to remember that that we need to keep our affection set on things above. And that are there are things that we will go through for the glory of God. And particularly when it comes to spreading the gospel, the Bible warns us that we will be hated because he was he was hated and. We're going to look at Apostle Paul because we know that Paul, he used to be Saul and he, I don't know why I just said it like that, but he, he was once Saul. He was persecuting Christians and consenting for them to be thrown into prison and killed. And he became Paul. And once he was converted, um, someone told him that, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was when he was in that, when he was talking to Jesus on the Damascus road, but he was basically told that, you know, there was going to be things that he would suffer, you know, for following Christ. And so God wants us to remember that there will be things that we go through as a result of following him. And the thing, the question is that, you know, because there were not everybody in the Bible was a martyr, but we do see that there were martyrs, um, in the Bible, Stephen, the disciples, um, I believe all of them were martyred except for John. I can't remember um, if the if the disciple John was martyred, but um, every last one of them, for, I believe, um, were martyred um, as a result of teaching Jesus, preaching Jesus. So, yeah, that's important for us to remember that that not only do we 
Not only do we take part in the power of his resurrection, but also in the fellowship of his sufferings. And just going back to John chapter 12, before we get into Acts, God is reminding us, because I'll be honest, you know, it's not something that I really think about on a daily basis, but it's definitely been on my heart as I've been studying some things. And I think it's something important for us to, it's a very sobering idea when you think about it. Because no, not everybody will be a martyr for the faith, but you know, we don't know. So John, going back to John 24 and 25, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it, it bringeth forth much fruit. And so as believers, it's important for us to remember that, yes, whether it's a physical death because of the gospel or whether it's just a different form of persecution, that is for a reason. It's so that other people can be saved. Jesus died for the sins of the world and how God chooses to use you in this time can be the very thing that brings about salvation for your family, salvation for somebody. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, unto life eternal. Now, that doesn't mean we're going around saying, I hate my life, but it's just saying, it's having a heart posture of saying, I'm willing to give up anything um, in this world to have eternal life. And that's the question that we can ask ourselves, you know, am I able to, can I really say that? Am I able to um, have the heart posture that whatever it takes to have life in eternity, am I, am I willing to give that up in this life? Am I willing to preach the gospel like G Jesus commanded us to do in Matthew 28 and 20? Am I willing to be a light in the world as we're commissioned to be, I think in Matthew chapter five, to be the salt on the earth? Am I being salty? Am I being a light in darkness? So let's go to Acts 21 because here in Acts 21, Apostle Paul was about to head to Jerusalem and his friends were telling him, please don't go to Jerusalem because you're going to go to jail and possibly even die if you go there. But he didn't let that stop him. Let's read what he said about that. And I would encourage you to study this chapter for yourself. It's really good because it really kind of put things puts things into perspective as it relates to what can happen when we do share the gospel. And so it says in Acts 21 and 13, then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? Let's go back up. Um, verse 11 of Acts 21. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet. And it's saying that a prophet came to them, to them named Agabus. And this is what he prophesied and said, thus said the whole, thus saith the Holy Ghost, shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle? And shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And there are more people even in this time going forth that will be martyrs of the faith. And I know that. I'll be honest, that's not something easy to think about, um, you know, like if I were to be a person like that. And so it's important for us to remember not to be sad about it, but of course, to be in, to grow in the knowledge of God and to ensure that we are in right standing with him and to understand that this is a reality of the believer. We may not hear it talked about a lot of times, but Apostle Paul, man, he stayed getting persecuted. Now, this was a man that was persecuting Christians. And then he definitely had his portion of being persecuted. You know, he was thrown in jail. He was shipwrecked. Um, he, you know, yeah, he went through a lot for it to preach the gospel. But he was saying, like, I'm ready because he understood that it was bigger than him. He understood his purpose. He understood the calling on his life. And I pray that we'll also understand the calling on our li lives as believers. I pray that God will help us to understand the totality, the fullness of the gospel, because this is a part of it. Um, John 24, except, a, you know, a corn of wheat falls to the ground, it abideth alone. And um, God places us, at, places us as witnesses in the earth so that the gospel can be preached. And just like Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, um, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So even at a very hard moment in his life, before he, as he was being crucified, 
he was thinking about other people. And so as believers, it's important for us to, when we look out in the world, for us to have that same perspective when it comes to the lost. And he's been dealing with me a lot about that. And so I pray that this teaching, this study, this insight has been a blessing to you all. And that it's just been something that we can really think about because honestly, I have not really been thinking much about it. But um, the question is, you know, am I ready to not only be bound, but to die um, for the name of the Lord Jesus? So, yeah, I love y'all and I pray you have a blessed day.